From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech Podcast is brought broadcast. It's broadcast. a podcast now, <laughs> not just a podcast. Is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting. On the web at asmallorange.com. You want to get the next one since I screwed the first one up? <laughs> sure. And by audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners can get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. You know, that serves me right because I, I messed with you for screwing up the intro last week. So, of course, I'm going to screw up the intro this week. It's karma, man. It all so, comes around. It does. So, if you did listen to last week's episode, you know that we are in the middle of a contest. Woo-hoo. If we reach 200 subscribers on YouTube and 500 subscribers on iTunes, we're going to give away a $50 Amazon gift card. So here's what you have to do to be eligible. First, subscribe. If you're over 18, wait, no. Okay. I don't care if they're over 18. <laughs> it's if all, it's, all the contests you know, are If I'm legally 18. required, to, I don't know. And you can't live in Canada, okay? Yeah. Oh, crap, I forgot about all the, the requirements. <laughs> you have to be legally able to be a part of this contest. So it's work that out. I don't know where you live. Work it out, okay? So... But here's what you have to do for us to consider you eligible. First, you have to subscribe to Deemable Tech on YouTube and iTunes. All you got to do is go to iTunes, search for Deemable Tech. It's going to be the first thing that comes up. Uh, Same thing with YouTube. Just search for it. Um, Second, go on Facebook and like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Deemable. Same thing, follow us on Twitter. So subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Then send us an email to giftcard at deemable.com, and in that email, tell us your Facebook name, your Twitter account, and your YouTube username. We will pick one eligible email at random, and we'll announce it on the show. So to make it easy for you, all you have to do is go to our website at deemable.com, and there are links to our Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Twitter accounts, all available in the top right of our website under the heading Follow Deemable Tech. It's pretty easy. So go subscribe, like, and follow us, and make sure to share it with your friends and let th- get them to like and subscribe to us and get your emails in so you can win that $50 gift card. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Ray, I just wanted to tell you that you look great tonight. Okay. Thanks, Tom. You don't look so bad yourself. Well, thank you, Ray. Uh, you know, we've often been complimented that we really have faces for radio. <laughs> And to commemorate (laughs) that, uh, we've entered ourselves into Folio Weekly's yearly Best of Jacks contest under the hottest local celebrity category, which is exactly where you expected to find us, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Now, by saying we've entered ourselves into Folio Weekly's Best of Jacksonville contest, we basically are begging people to vote for us. Absolutely. Uh, Because basically, I think it's the most ridiculous category of all, period. And it'd be even more ridiculous if we won it. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you follow us on Facebook, you've seen the pictures. We're, we're running an extensive campaign to win this. <laughs> Just vote. Go to What you have to do to vote, first off, it's very important. Go to folioweekly.com slash bestofjacks. Or if you forget that and you go to Folio Weekly, just click the Best of Jacks link. And then you have to fill out this long form. Obviously, it would help if you live in Jacksonville. If you're watching or listening to the show and you don't live in Jacksonville, we won't tell. Just vote for us. It's okay. Just make up stuff for the other answers, okay? That's right. You can put Ray and Tom in all of them. It doesn't even, <laughs> it, it doesn't even matter. Best radio show host, Ray and Tom. Best, uh, what are the other options? Best restaurant. Best thing that happened in Jacksonville, Ray and Tom. Worst thing that happened in Jacksonville, Ray and Tom. That's right. Just put Ray and Tom in all down of the them. Down the line, down the line. Make it easy. Like, you know, Christmas tree. Just Ray and Tom it all the way down. Now, if you have, you know, a favorite something. Do that. You should you do know, that. Like, you know, legitimately. We don't want to We don't want to rain on anybody's parade. I would really love to see the, like, best, Jack, best restaurant in Jacksonville, <laughs> Ray and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but hottest lo- local celebrity? That's what we're running for. Ray Hollister and Tom Braun. Yes. Uh, and if you want to say Ray and Tom of Deemable Tech, but Ray Hollister and Tom Braun is what you should fill out in that field. Um, and you have to put at least 30 answers of like 50 questions Jeez. to for the for your vote to count. So make sure that you do that too. And, and vote. I mean, uh, you know, we write articles in Folio Weekly. We love Folio. They're great people. Uh, vote for your favorite stuff. And, uh, and of course, also, you know, there are some other shows that could be really awesome, like First Coast Connect here at WJCT, favorite radio station, WJCT, just saying, you might want to support them as well. Yeah. All right. 
So that's it. Go to folioweekly.com slash bestofjacks and vote for me and Tom as hottest local celebrity. <laughs> Do it. All right. Uh, we're going to answer some questions. Questions. I think questions. we should. I didn't get uh, Sean to record something for that little bit. So No. Questions. No. Qu- you- All right. Let's, let's just look at Carlos's <laughs> okay. question. Carlos's question. What do you ask? Uh, Carlos writes, hey, Ray and Tom, I'd really like to start a podcast. Oh. oh. But I have no idea where to begin. Would I have to buy studio time? Don't some people podcast out of their house? What kind of equipment would I need to do anyway? I just want to know where to get started. Thanks. Love your show, Carlos. You know what, Tom? Hmm. I think we found a question that we are not qualified to answer. Oh, why, why, why is that, Ray? We do a podcast almost every week. Well, the thing is, D-Mobile Tech, our show, is not really like most podcasts. You know, most podcasts are recorded at radio stations and what? really nice studios. Uh, so we've invited somebody who has experience doing a podcast the real way. Uh, joining us in the studio, we have DJ Shot, the host of The Green Light Show. Hello. Hey, thanks How for coming, you? man. Hey, thanks. DJ. Now, let's talk a little bit about your show. Um, describe your show to us. Explain what it's about. Uh, the Green Light Show <laughs> is mainly kind of an outlet for people who, who have those thoughts in their head on a day-to-day that they can't express. <laughs> Okay. For fear of offending or for fear of bothering people, uh, and and that that's kind of an outlet for those those people. So all right, well, yeah. here, let me explain how I found your show. Uh, I think I mentioned, it, I think I emailed you one time about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I was looking for other podcasts in Jacksonville because I, I really didn't. I honestly didn't feel like we were qualified to answer this question. I mean, like I know how it's done, but I don't do it. So, mm-hmm. um, and I, I searched for other shows in Jacksonville, and I found your show, and uh, I loved it. Now, let me give a little disclaimer. Uh, it's not safe for work. It's not safe for children. It's not safe for the elderly. It's pretty much just not That's safe. safe for most people. <laughs> most people aren't going to like yeah. the green light show, what and if I'm you okay have a with heart that. Heart condition? No, <laughs> no, no. If you're pregnant, heart condition, <laughs> anything. Pretty much, you don't want to listen to the show. Don't. It's a it's horrible awesome. show. It's, it's hilarious. So bad. Wow. It, uh, yeah, <laughs> that right there will probably get you like you know a hundred yeah. new subscribers. I tell people oh, they can't do I'm something. I'm not supposed to listen to it. I'll, I'll show you right now. Uh, quite a bit of potty language. We, yeah, yeah, potty, potty, potty language. Yeah. Yes, um, I can't even describe what you guys talk about on your show because it wouldn't be appropriate for our show. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> even just discussing the topics would be uh, <laughs> probably not okay for our show. But uh, I, I, like I said, I, I will admit that I, I love your show. I love listening to it. Uh, it is hilarious. Um, I just, you know, I, I just make sure that my wife and my child are nowhere near me and, and I have my headphones on when I listen. So there we go. Most people like to make sure that their wife and children are nowhere near me for fear of uh, <laughs> me saying something horrible. So, but DJ, where do you, uh, where do you record your show at? Do you record it at your house? At my house. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Absolutely. So, so you are much more qualified to talk about this than <laughs> yeah. we are. Sure. I suppose. This, this yeah. is not our house. Our house. No. If I had a house that had a, uh, I did sleep soundproof, once, but no, <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> No, I didn't. Uh, okay. It's not a weird one time. house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be a very yeah. strange house. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so how did you get started? How long have you yeah. been doing Green Light Show? Uh, we started back in uh, 2005, and wow. so it, that's a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, we we you know it started because in terms of podcasting, that's kind of ancient. Yeah. Oh no, I that's mean, yeah, definitely you guys are prehistoric. Yeah. And let you me guys let were me around rephrase. before the iPhone. Before the iPhone. <laughs> Before a lot of babies that are in yeah, existence now. mine. Yeah, my kid. before your yeah. baby. Just before. Uh, <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, we started it. There were tons of great radio stations here in Jacksonville or shows that I really like to listen to in the morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, I can do that. Mm, so I okay. had like a USB microphone. We set it up <laughs> and it was horrible. I wouldn't call it a podcast. Didn't, I didn't even know that podcasting was a thing at well, that sure. point. Yeah. Because it was barely, it was barely a thing. A thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of when it started. Okay. okay. Wow. Nice. I had no idea that you guys had been... You went back that far. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we we took a giant break. Um, uh huh. Like then for we a couple of years, right? For a couple of years, yeah. and we got back together in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Okay. So we've been doing it steady since then. All right. Now cool. you mentioned a USB mic. What what other kind of equipment do you use? I mean, we <laughs> we're incredibly blessed with right. uh, you know incredible electric voice mics. What do you right. guys use? Um, you know, when it started out, yeah, it was just a USB microphone and like a, a bell or I mean a blue. Yeah, it was a blue plastic uh, one. It was, it was the like blue snowball. Six. Oh, snowball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And so we would set that on a desk, and it sounded horrible. <laughs> um, but that's how we started, and uh, it evolved. And you know, 
I was already into audio recording, so mm-hmm. okay. I knew about how to connect all that stuff. Um, but it, it then it evolved, and you know, we had more people. I wanted to improve the sound quality, so we got uh, separate mics and a mixer and all that nice. fun stuff. Okay, but we so, have yeah. So now you use a mixer with like what six channel or eight channels or yeah, I've got an eight channel uh, Mackie Pro FX twelve. That's uh, okay. about a two hundred and thirty dollar mixer. We're using Rode Procasters. Nice, uh, great mics, great company, Rode. Um, and uh, and a uh, Presonus Fire Studio Mobile as okay. the audio interface to get it all into the computer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and and like you said though, that made a huge difference going from the the one snowball to the the full setup. Oh yeah. How much did that run you all together? Do you remember? Um, well, we are very fortunate to have some of the equipment given to us. Oh, awesome. Um, but uh, all together, I mean, you can get a podcast up and running for. Easily under two hundred dollars. The great—I th- yeah. would say right now—is the best, probably some of the best times to or the best time to get into podcasting because mm-hmm. there's podcast kits. Yeah, you can go to Guitar Center and go home and have your podcast oh, really? up and running. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Did not know that. Yeah, That's I actually cool. was just there today. I saw that. I was like, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, now do you run uh, a Mac or Windows to uh, Mac. to record it on. Okay, running a Mac, recording using uh, Logic uh, okay. Pro Ten now. Okay, so very cool. And you also Ustream, right? Yes. Now, do you Ustream from the same computer that you're using to broadcast? That I, yeah, no. I uh, We have two separate computers, a main computer for <laughs> audio processing, recording, okay. and the Ustream. Uh, Ustreaming, the, the, the other computer is used for uh, um, playing music or okay. handling Skype calls, right. those kinds of things. We, we call that computer shot. <laughs> oh, we have one like that. You have one called Sean. <laughs> we have a, he's Sean right over there. Well, I'm going to call my computer Sean from now on. So yes. there we go. <laughs> That's awesome. There are two Sean's. It's a solid model. Very solid. Now, model. do you do a lot of editing on your show after, or do you just go straight with what happens, happens? It and used let it be? to be we would. And I'm very. Which one? What happens, happens, or? Uh, it used to be that we would edit heavily. Oh, okay. And that was mainly because we had, you know, we would want to talk about a news clip. So what right. we would do is we would. Uh, we would record comments about the news clip and drop them in okay. to the audio. Uh, so it was uh, it was not live. It was all hmm. very very edited together. Sure. And then once uh, once the equipment grew and we grew and became more confident, it was just sure. a stream okay. of blah. So cool. Yeah. I mean, gosh, a year ago, I think uh, we're streaming live now. Yeah. That would have been unthinkable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, oh gosh. When we first started out. <laughs> I know. No. no. <laughs> we remember when we were trying to do it on the pub, uh, the program schedule oh gosh and we were taking oh, this is so just a sidebar conversation sorry <laughs> but we would spend like all this time preparing each segment and then like i'd spend time editing them together it was insane um and then sean would come in and just sit there and be like done <laughs> Here, here's a question stupid. like programmatically like do you shoot for a certain length on your podcast uh we go for uh we shoot for an hour yeah okay. um if it goes past that cool if yeah. not then uh you know, if it doesn't go up to the hour, then that's that's unfortunate. Okay. But yeah, we yeah. shoot for the hour. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I was just curious because uh, I've heard different things, like they should be short or whatever. They should, you know. Yeah, different. Po- it depends on what you're podcasting about. It really does. Um, for our show, again, it was it's it was kind of created to uh, as an outlet for <laughs> um, offensive, uh, horrible things, but. Uh, <laughs> With 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 other podcasts, you know, you have shows that are about different topics. Sewing, mm-hmm. um, oh yeah, I listen to a ton of sewing. Sewing, podcasts. sewing podcasts are Not a huge true. hit. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so it depends on what the top uh, what the topic is, I suppose. Turn up the volume. They're sewing. Now, <laughs> yeah. How long does it take you to prepare for your show? Like before you actually sit down on the mic and everybody gets ready. Like how long do you have to get ready for your show? How long does that usually end up being? You know, it's it's. Uh, Sporadic throughout the week. I mean, okay. the equipment's already set up, so we turn it on and go. Right. Uh, but as far as like creating content, content yeah. um, I have a uh, in, in my reminders app in my iPhone. I just jot down things <laughs> that I notice throughout the week, maybe things that I hate or dislike or love. Yeah. And uh, that's what we'll talk about is going off of those show notes. And we don't always get to all those things. We don't use them as like a script per se. Mm-hmm. Um, but when the conversation's running stale, we have something to hop back on topic yeah. with. That's cool. I always think of you uh, whenever I see the shirt now. Nice story, bro. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, 
So <laughs> that was a that was a nice rant. Uh, yeah, I was I was walking through uh, a mall and I saw this guy wearing a nice story bro shirt and I was like, I don't like that. I'm going to talk about that <laughs> yeah. on the show. So and actually, the the next day after I heard that episode is when I saw a guy walking downtown. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. taking that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I nice, posted it on nice your wall. Story, bro. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, I saw that. Like, yeah. oh, what? Why? <laughs> and I, I didn't realize how stupid that looked until oh, I actually saw it in the wild, and I was like, wow. I hope no one yeah. listening is wearing a nice story. You Sorry, know, like, yeah, I hope are. they are, and, and maybe they'll change. Now the you shirt. know. Don't do that. <laughs> I'll see the air of their. Ways. Don't wear that shirt. <laughs> Um, after you get done with the show, uh, how long do you, is it before you're able to upload that file and actually be podcasted? Uh, it depends. Um, if I'm lazy or if I'm not lazy, I'll do it right away. Sure. Uh, so we'll just bounce the audio file to exporting the audio file and then throw it up on the servers. So. Okay. So like an hour roughly? Usually, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, uh, I think you touched on maybe a couple of them, but what's the main software that you're using? Uh, the main software I'm using for recording is Logic. Um, that's available for the Mac. Um, I just like it because it's easy to use okay. yeah, for cool. me. Um, so I use Logic for this for the main software for recording. Um, I but also you could use GarageBand. I mean, totally could. Yeah. It's, you have more options with Logic, right? Right. You can do more stuff with it. Yeah, like I said, I was already into audio recording, so I had Logic. Yeah. So that's just what I wanted to use. Yeah, okay. I, that's what I had. But yeah, you can totally use GarageBand, Audacity. And, yeah, I was about to say, and that's a that's a Mac exclusive, right? Um, but if you're running Windows, you know there is a, the free version, uh, free Audacity that works. Yeah, uh, we end up we use Audition, right? Adobe Audition, which is popular in the radio radio industry. I'm sure, it'll only cost you a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much. I think it's like one ninety nine. I think for a, oh, really uh, the low end version of it. So it's, it's not Adobe terrible. though. You I have to subscribe. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other software you use? Um, we use, uh, I mean, other than the Ustream broadcasting yeah. app, that's about it. Yeah. And your website's WordPress, right? Right. Yeah. They're just Love like we WordPress. use. Yeah. Makes life a lot easier. And you do the podcast through WordPress, right? Do, um, you, do you do it that way? What do you mean? Like, do you post the, the article? Is your feed coming from your WordPress yes, site? Yes. The feed yeah. is coming yeah. directly from WordPress. So right. you post a new post and that becomes your, exactly. your feed. Yeah. So uh, let me, since we had that sidebar, let's talk to the audience. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically when you have a WordPress site, you cr- can create an RSS feed, which we talked about in a previous episode, mm-hmm. what that is. It's the feed that your podcast is actually, that's what you subscribe to in iTunes or your other apps. And with WordPress, you can set it up so that you can post an, a blog post and that actually is your podcast. So you just put a link to your MP3 file and then you share that RSS feed with iTunes, and that becomes your podcast. Mm-hmm. Or you can push it through something like FeedBurner. Do you guys use that? I don't use FeedBurner. Never okay. have, but I know people who have, and yeah, yeah, that that works as well. Do you do it directly through that to iTunes, or is it? Um, I I know. forget how I set that up. You, yeah. you, there's a there's a way you can go into iTunes and submit your RSS feed. So yeah. that's what we did. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, let's see. So. Let's talk a little bit more uh, the 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 back end of things. Um, what have you done? Like obviously, when you start out, no one knows you exist. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, and you're in the middle. It's like like my mom called uh, on a previous episode, okay. and she wanted to start selling stuff. And I was like, you know, it's like being in the desert. No one knows you're there, and you'll die. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, oh, totally. You're not going to go anywhere. You're just going to die unless people know that you're there and start coming to you. So, how did you grow your audience? How did you get people to listen to? Your show, you know, that's kind of interesting. You know, when we first started in, in around 2005, once we finally figured out how to get the episodes online, <laughs> and even then, it wasn't even an RSS feed; it was just yeah. posting them oh, on, yeah. on some weird website. I don't know. Um, but once we got them online, the listeners just found us, and it was awesome. Okay. And I didn't have to do any work. So and they did just you go came. through a? You didn't have your own site. You went through like a? I think a, we went through something. It was a. It was a alternative to FeedBurner at the time. Okay. It's not around anymore. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's how it was set up, and people just found us, and it was great. Hmm. We didn't do any work, and then we stopped doing the show, and all those people disappeared. Uh, In the meantime, the podcasting scene totally changed. Yeah. Um, now you have. I think there's somewhere around five hundred thousand podcasts out there in the U.S. Yeah. alone. So your options are a lot more as a, as a listener sure. to podcast, yeah. and it's going to be harder to make to make a name for yourself. So uh, we would pair up with other podcasts that maybe had been around a little longer. Right. And see, let's trade, let's do some cross promotion, sure. that kind of thing. That was the main thing that did it was cross promotion. Okay, okay, cool, cool. 
Um, and, and I'm completely asking not only for Carlos, but for myself. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get a larger audience? <laughs> Um, and another question on that same kind of, uh, angle, is your show making any money? Like, how are you supporting this? Is this, are you paying this out of your own pocket to keep this In thing the beginning, running? Absolutely. Okay. Um, pretty much everything that's, you know, the show's on autopilot right now, which is kind of cool. We have every, at the, at the beginning of every year, the previous year's episodes, we sell them as a season. So we have okay. season one and so oh, forth. Cool. Um, and that way, you know, it does two things doing that. It provides a way to bring in revenue for the show, but it also keeps new listeners listening to the more recent episodes as the show develops. They'll hear okay. kind of a more recent version of us. And then if they want to hear the previous stuff, they can always purchase a, a previous season. So. Okay. So, okay. And you send them like a CD or where do they purchase um, it? It's just a iTunes? download link. Yeah. Okay. So. okay. Very cool. Cool. Um, and is that self-sustaining now? I mean, are, are you making money from it or is it still? Definitely. I mean, I think podcasting, you, you really have to put in, I mean, I know of other shows that are yeah. doing shows five days a week yeah. and they're making a living doing their show. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, but that's, it takes blood, sweat and tears to do that. Sure. I mean, yeah. it, most people aren't going to put in that much effort. Yeah. And you guys, have been, though, you've been around and I know you took a break and that, that might, might've hurt you a little bit, but I mean, you guys have been around for a while and I think that's. That kind of consistency is really important, right? Yeah, I think the consistency, and even the the more recently, we haven't had so much consistency doing shows just with various things popping up. We're getting back on track, <laughs> so don't worry. Um, but uh, yeah, consistency is very important. If mm-hmm. people don't, you know, if people don't find you current, yeah. then they have no reason to listen. Yeah, it reminds me like a, I love the web comic Penny Arcade, um, and they were asked like, like, well, how do you become a successful web comic? And they were like. Start in 1998. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like there you go. If you get in early, that's big. Yeah, <laughs> they but got also in before there were 500 million, you know, web comics. Sure. So. Didn't iTunes just hit a billion subscribers? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I know. I got an email from iTunes saying, you know, basically freshen up the house. We're going to show you off. Right. Like, right. From for everybody got. It. I was like, oh crap. Okay, let me clean up our description and all yeah, that. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, and that's that's another thing that you have to do when you start a, a podcast is you have to make sure that your description is well written. Uh, Feedburner does a really great job of it because you can go in there and instead of having to know all the technical details with XML and and editing that, they just make it real easy for you. There's an iTunes, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, thing. Yeah, it's an iTunes thing. It's an iTunes button thing. <laughs> That's the technical uh, term. Welcome to button Deem Deem yeah. Tech. Yeah. <laughs> these are these are the the exact details that you have to follow. Um, but anyways, you go into that link for iTunes, uh, making it iTunes better. That's the word. Enhancer. <laughs> and better. Enhancer. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> filling in my brain fart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> that was not possibly the best way to word it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you go into the iTunes enhancer or whatever it's called, and that's when you can enter the description and enter your images. And one thing you have to do is it has to be over 1400 by 1400. I think they got it up to 1600 by 16 now. now. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got to put a really big image in there. And, uh, that's one thing that you have to do a really good description, really good image, big image, and that can get you featured in iTunes. If you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. If you're really lucky, you'll get featured on uh, new and new and noteworthy. Right. Yeah. New and noteworthy. And that'll get you an insane amount of traffic. They need, so. they need those big images probably for the uh, retina displays, right? Yeah. Yeah. For the iPhone, the iPad. Those I know. Big ones. You know, like on, uh, well, I don't, I don't have an iPhone. I have uh, an Android, but like Android's got kind of the same thing going on. They really up the resolution on everything. So like. If I'm on Google Listen and like somebody has a low res picture, it looks like you know, yeah. and you're like, oh, please upgrade your resolution. Yeah, you know, get a better picture up there. So that's important. So you, you have to work on that and get your images looking really sharp, uh, very large, very so that large. they can that so they can feature them, and also too, so they look good when you're playing them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see what other questions that I want to ask you. I got a question for you, DJ. Right. So uh, you're doing this podcast. You've been doing it for a while. Um, at least initially, it costs you money out of your own pocket. So what's the reward for you? What what what, what do you get out of it? Ah, yeah. Now now is for the. Uh, do you guys have a Kleenex? I'm going to break out in tears here. <laughs> no, it really. Sean, it's, can we get some violin music? <laughs> <laughs> it's for the. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I a- anytime I get an email, I see an iTunes review. Uh, yeah. Someone likes the show on Facebook. Anytime any of that happens, it's amazing. Yeah, like what the fact that what I'm doing, someone else enjoys, mm-hmm. is really incredible. So I do it for the fans, and that's um, that's really what keep, keeps all of us doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I, I don't I can't think of any other reason to do it other than that. And it takes somebody who's a little bit narcissistic at the very least to want to start a podcast. <laughs> so that kind of reward is uh, is great. Cool. Okay. What do you think has been the most challenging thing to kind of look on the flip side of doing the podcast? Uh, the the most challenging part of of doing a podcast, no doubt, is uh, is doing it, like maintaining <laughs> it, and and uh, keeping it up. Because you know you might hit a, a three month lull where you're not seeing that many new fans, you're not seeing yeah. that many that many emails coming in, and it, and it feels like you're echoing in the internet, and and yeah. no one hears it. Yeah, um, I, I know that we've often felt like I mean, especially because my mic cover is black. Right. It's just like it's sucking in and there's nothing coming back <laughs> yeah, at all. Yeah, exactly. It's you're just talking into the emptiness. And that that definitely is probably when it feels most frustrating. Yeah. Um it's for me it was just always like somebody's got to be listening, so I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Right. Um and th- that's it's worth it in the end because people do end up listening, so. Sure. Now, when you did quit, what was the, what caused you to 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 stop? If what that's was, not like a big like we don't want to. No, dig I'm not. Into dirt I'm not going to. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to have any flashbacks or anything crazy. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like if there's bad blood or something. Yeah. Just, oh there's yeah. No bad blood. I lost well, creative control. I didn't like it. Exactly. The um, people on the podcast they screwed me over, man. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe there was bad blood. Not for oh. me anyway. But those people are are long gone by now, so it's fine. Uh, no, we uh, we uh, when we started, we had probably five or six people doing this thing. Oh, wow. That's oh. a lot. Yeah. So, and I didn't, I didn't realize at the beginning, like, oh, this is not conducive. We're all talking over each other. You can't hear what anyone's saying. That sounds like a really familiar story. It does. <laughs> it, it actually sounds, yeah, quite a little familiar. So we, I think uh, it was called uh, Voice Soup. Uh, it was, uh, was one, what I heard one time. <laughs> voice That's, Soup. That actually makes sense. I can yeah. relate to Voice Soup. I've tasted Voice Soup, yeah. and it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Um, we... Uh, yeah, so so once we trimmed that down, it was really just me and Brandon. Okay. Um, Brandon's uh, one of the co-hosts on the show. He's yeah. been there since the beginning, mm-hmm. since we uh, started in 2005. He's actually the one that came up with the name for the show, so oh, okay. props to Brandon. Um, but, uh, yeah, because but- you guys had a fantastic name in the, in the beginning, didn't you? <laughs> oh, my God. What was that name? We were in, you know, I, th- there's some things and you tell like childhood <laughs> embarrassing stories and you cringe and you feel so uncomfortable in your own skin when you, when you tell them. Saying the name of this show makes me feel that way. We <laughs> called it uh, mm, The Podsters. <laughs> That's what we called it. That was it. creative. Yeah. yeah, we were, you know, we had been mulling it over for weeks and finally we landed on Podsters. So. That's what awesome. you voted and landed on. Yeah. Wow. wow. But, you know, talk, I, mean, I didn't uh, think to ask you this until I just, th- just thought of it. Um, it. Coming up with a name can be kind of challenging. Oh, it definitely is. Uh, because you, first off, you have to make sure that no one else is using your name. Oh, yeah. And sometimes people don't do that. I understand. Yeah, people don't do that. Yeah. No, there is uh, <laughs> there is another green light show, but it's a YouTube channel for reggae, which doesn't relate at all. <laughs> See, I told you. I to- sorry, sorry. <laughs> so there's yeah. the green light show YouTube channel. There's the green light boys. This the is green a new light podcast boys, yeah. that came out recently. Um, I you like that show, don't you? You're a big I'm fan. I'm a huge fan of the green light boys. <laughs> yeah. They're like the green light shows children. So. Yeah, it was a couple a uh, couple episodes ago. I heard you talking about that. Yeah, they, there's there's a there's a there's a that was one where you did the whole episode by yourself, right? I think so. Yeah, or was it? Yeah, because you played a clip of their right. show. Yeah, you're a big fan. I you, was a you huge fan. Love that green light show. boys. Check them out. I don't know their website. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your website? If people are brave enough, uh, yeah. if you're brave enough, if you if you, and, uh, and I I will. Sorry to interrupt. No, you. that's fine. Uh, it is. I'm laying out huge warning here. You know. It is not safe for work. It is explicit. Adults only. Adults only. If you're somebody show, who though. doesn't like uh, um, crass language yeah. or, or anything of that nature, you're not going to be into it, and that's fine. There's yeah, tons sure. of great podcasts out there to check out. Um, but yeah, if you if you are brave enough, greenlightshow.com, that's our, our website, and you can check us out there. And Facebook? Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash greenlightshow, and Twitter as well, twitter.com slash greenlightshow. Sweet. All yeah. right. Well, uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions for DJ? Um, oh, I did. I saw you had a very cool thing on your wrist. I forgot right. what that's, that's called. It's a, a birthmark. No, yes, it's, right. <laughs> I have a, uh, a Nike fuel band. Tell us about that. The Nike fuel band. I've had it since October. And when I first got it, my uh, my friends are like, "You're gonna t- what, are you, what are you spending $150 on this thing? 
you're going to take it off in two months and forget about it. Mm. But I've had it ever since then, and I really love it. it it's uh, what, what I like about it, the main thing, is that it tells me the time, and I don't have to pull my phone out of my pocket to see that. That's like a watch. It's kind of That's... like one of those ancient watches, <laughs> yeah. I love how we're coming full circle. What if you could see the time on your wrist without <laughs> no, getting your phone? You didn't have out. to pull out your phone. <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa had one of these, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, it acts as a watch, but it also it tracks your movement throughout the day. Okay. It's a great motivator when I've had an extremely lazy day, and I, I see that... Uh, oh no, I have burned 50 calories and at 6 mm. p.m. I should probably move. <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, I, I but I love it. It's great. It's I shower with it. I swim with it. You shouldn't do that apparently, but yeah. it still works. It still so. works. Yeah, uh, we were talking before the show. I had the, uh, the jawbone up, which was right. the biggest disaster of oh, all man. time. Wow. I loved it for the two weeks that it worked. It right. was amazing for two weeks. Um, and the next one I got was amazing for another two weeks. And I did that four times. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Four yeah. times. Yeah. Well, they were great. They were like, here, here, have another one, have another one. They just wow. kept shipping me new ones. And I even came on First Coast Connect and talked about it, you know, like how great a product it was, blah. Oh, it was just a disaster. That wow. doesn't seem like a, a, a money-making proposition to have a product in the last well, two weeks and have great customer service. You can have bad yeah. customer service to make that work, <laughs> but you can't have great customer service and a no, crappy product. That's going to be expensive. Apparently, they yeah. actually had a big deal where this whole batch was defective. Mm-hmm. So they gave everybody their money back, question, no questions asked, mm-hmm. and they kept replacing them right up until the second version came out, and they're like, you're not getting any more. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting you off. You can buy a new one if you want it. How is Jawbone still a business? That's crazy. I, wow. Well, it, again, it was because they were amazing customer service. They were fantastic to us, except for that last thing where they said they wouldn't replace it. Right. But uh, apparently now it's good. Um, does it track your sleep? Does it monitor your sleep? It like doesn't monitor problem? your sleep. Uh. Um, and here's, I wasn't so interested in that because I just, I don't know. For me personally, I find the whole sleep tracking thing to be a bit <laughs> arbitrary. I'm moving uh. around in my bed and it, it's telling me if I'm in REM or not. I don't yeah. know. I like that. That was my favorite thing. The, the The cool thing about the jawbone is that it, because it was keeping track of when you were in light sleep or whatever, right. it woke you during that light sleep in oh, that really? period of time right before you have to get up. So like within a 30-minute period, if you're in light sleep, it goes ahead and just wakes you up. But if you're still in deep sleep, it waits until you get into that light sleep, and then it'll wake you up. Did that feature really work? Oh, it was amazing. Really? That was – I mean, that's, what was like, that's a deal breaker for me. Okay. Because I love that. And I have the same company. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same uh, the company that does the Jawbone um, that makes the motion part of it, Motion right. X. They have an app for the iPhone as well, and it works almost as good. But because I have to lay it on my bed, my wife, you know, she's pregnant, so she's moving all right. over the bed, all constantly kicking me out of the bed, all kind of stuff. I would just push so it, it doesn't off work the edge as well. My sleep, <laughs> you know, I would, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've woken up. She's gonna kill me because I know she's listening. <laughs> I woke up with her foot in my back, and oh, nice. she's on the edge of her side, and I'm on the edge of my side. I'm like, honey, seriously, wake up. <laughs> but yeah, so it's not as accurate because of that. Uh, she's shaking the bed all over the place. But uh, We men get very little bed real estate, no. so that's, that's okay. Especially right now. She's crazy <laughs> oh, right wow, now yeah. with the pregnancy. I'm so dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, DJ- I am sleeping here tonight. <laughs> yeah. DJ, I'm, I'm so glad you could uh, answer some questions for us about yeah. uh, podcasting and listeners who, again, are uh, up for it, uh, you know, <laughs> over 18 and, uh, you know, uh, not at work probably. I yeah. uh, should definitely check out with headphones, uh. <laughs> yeah, greenlightshow.com. Yeah. Um, and subscribe to the show. Go to iTunes if, if you're going to do it. <laughs> not everybody. Right, right. Not everybody. Don't do it. Not everybody. Yeah. Not Grandma, you, Aunt Selma. Stop it. <laughs> okay, Grandma, but everybody no. else, if you are if you want to check it out, go to iTunes and search for Green Light Show. Uh, all one word or can they search all three? All one word. Yeah. Just all one word spaced out. Yeah. It or you can go to greenlightshow.com slash iTunes. Right. And it'll take you right to the iTunes page. Um, We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to let you out of here. Thanks again for coming by. Enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Thanks. You're listening to Deemable Tech.
Welcome back to Dean Mobile Tech. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And if you have a question for Dean Mobile Tech, uh, there's a phone number they can call, right? Yes, they can. They can call 1-888-972-9868. Leave us a nice voicemail or send us a nice email at questions at DMable.com. Do they have to be nice? I would prefer it. Okay. You know, yeah, I do. I do prefer the nice ones. We'll get to the nice ones faster. We, yeah. <laughs> How about that? We have, we've gotten some mean emails before. Nothing that was like host, like overly hostile. You never read that email then. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, mm. I got rid of that email. I, you I answered that it. with me. I answered you? the question, but I didn't answer it on the air. Ah. See? So, see? So, yeah, before be the break, nice. uh, we were talking to DJ Shop from the Greenlight Show about podcasting. And I just wanted to, to kind of recap uh, for Carlos. Um, so, what you want to do. You do have to get some equipment. You got to get a microphone, mm. a decent mic that'll plug into your to your computer, either a mixer through would USB. Be nice if you can afford it. Yeah, if you've got multiple, we should have talked about this with DJ. Yeah. But uh, if you have multiple hosts, you got to have multiple microphones and a mixer so you can balance out the the sound. And you're gonna want to have headphones because you want to hear the way it sounds, not what it sounds like in the room that you're in. Mm-hmm. The if you can find a room that has really good sound quality. Uh, either like with drapes or something that will absorb the sound. You don't want to do this in the bathroom because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's going to bounce around. Um, and then you have to have some software to to record it. Like I said, if you're running a Windows PC, yeah. Audacity is I was about great. To say, that, that's the great part because that part can be free. Yeah. Uh, if you're on a Mac, GarageBand, same thing. And I think Audacity you can have on the Mac as well. Um, yeah, either one of them are great. Audacity is open source and freeware, and I'm pretty sure there's a Mac version, there's a Linux version. Yeah. They got versions for everybody. It's uh, not so user friendly necessarily right up front, but yeah. uh, it's it's very powerful once you know what you're doing. Yeah, and there's most of the the high end microphones uh, on the market. They're 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 really great. They're they're worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like like DJ was saying, uh, the Snowball from Blue is actually a great mic, or the Yeti. It's a little bit more expensive. It's a great mic. Um, then that's how you record it. The next step is putting it on the web and getting it mm-hmm. uploaded. You got to have a website. You can do that through sites like GoDaddy, or there are some sites that will do podcasts for you. You pay a fee to them. Uh, I'll include a link to one that actually I know the guy who who runs it. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Buzz. Uh, no, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I can't remember the name, but you can actually just pay, and that's all that they do is set up podcasts for you. Hmm. Um, so it's a good site. I wish I could remember the name of it. Yeah, I love but, uh, it. Yeah, it's a great, great site. <laughs> hey, uh, okay, so cool. So that pretty much covers it. So yeah, you don't have to have a radio stu- station. You don't have to rent studio time, but you do have to buy some equipment to make if it happen. If you can get uh, a Sean Birch for your producer, not <laughs> our Sean Birch, maybe a clone of him. Any I recommend Sean it. Birch. I recommend it, you know. Sean Birch is really makes Sean the job Birch a lot easier. Sean Birch has well for us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he makes us sound good, yeah. Even though we're screw ups and we don't know anything, but you know that's not a crazy proposition either. If you are interested in working in radio, volunteer somewhere. Yeah, that's you how know, uh, that's how radio. That's how off. I got into this. Yeah, um, you know, volunteer somewhere, and that'll get you exposure to the business. You learn how things work, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that's a good way to do it. So do we have any other questions? Uh, we do have a few more questions. All right. I um, see we got one from Marvin. That's right. Go ahead. Can right. you read that for us, I Ray? can read it. I can read. It I can says, read good. Marvin writes, I have an HP computer with Windows XP. I've been trying to print my contact list alphabetically from Outlook. The left half of the page prints out, but the right half is hidden and will not print. It is laborious to have to click on an individual's name to get the whole address. This is frustrating because I want to print out a hard copy to keep by my desk so I do not have to have the computer turned on. Any ideas? Thanks. Hi, Marvin. Thanks for your question. Uh, so the first thing that I would say that you need to do is to check your printer settings when you are doing this, the printing the address book. Um, when you, you, you go to print and you go file print or control P or whatever you do, just before you click that actual print button where it prints the actual page, you're on a screen where you can select what printer you want to print with. And while you're on the screen, you can actually make changes to the print settings. And now, this screen, what it looks like, it depends on a lot of different factors. It depends on your operating system. It depends on what printer you have. It, it depends mm. on the program you launched the print from, you know? Um, but somewhere on the screen, so you got to search around a little bit, there should be uh, a button for preferences or advanced settings. Click on that. And then you want to look for an option that says something along the lines of fit to page or fit to paper size or shrink to fit. Most printers have a setting like this, and it will automatically resize a page that's too big for the paper, which is what it sounds like is happening here. It sounds like... Uh, the screen is just too big, and it's it's printing the left half, and it's cutting out the right half. So um, what you want to do is try and find that shrink-to-fit option, and uh, 
you have, you know, you might have to click on a different tab. You might have to search around. Just look around. You won't hurt anything. Um, these, these are just print settings, and, and you can't make the printer catch on fire or anything. Um, once you find that, select it, uh, then click the OK button to get back to the print screen. Now go ahead and click that print button, and hopefully the right side of the page is no longer cut off. Cool. So that solves the problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's one more thing Martin, may, Marvin sorry, may need to know, and it's kind of a doozy. Uh, Marvin, if you're using Outlook 2003, it actually prints using Internet Explorer, i.e. an entirely different program. <laughs> so you actually need to load up Internet Explorer and change the settings there. Wow, that is really convenient. I know, I know. Um, so go to in Internet Explorer, load it up, go to Page Setup, and from the File menu, and there you should find the Shrink to Fit option. Check it, and then go back to Outlook and print from Outlook, and boom, happy printing. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking about, too, he was saying that it was cut off. Mm -hmm. And one thing that could be happening, too, is if he has, if it's going to IE, he could having, be having ads popping up that are covering it as well. So you may need to shut those off. Maybe, but he really shouldn't have unless it, unless he's got adware infect an adware infection. He really shouldn't have ads coming up over the uh, the Outlook uh, calendar. That's true, but it should still either way the fit to page should take care of that because yeah. it'll make everything condensed to work in there. Okay. All right. So uh, if people have a question, Ray, uh, is there a phone number they can call? Oh right. Um. Let's see. It is one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. That's right. All right, we got another question from Richard. Richard writes, when I try to attach an attachment to an email, Internet Explorer loses connection to the Internet. I'm using Windows 7 with the latest patches applied by Windows Update and Internet Explorer 10. The email, This email attachment problem... Oops, sorry. I can't. I said I could read. I apparently can't. This email attachment problem happens on my Gmail and on a friend's Yahoo Mail. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us know what versions of Windows Internet Explorer you're using, Richard. That's yes. really helpful. Um, and so I took that information, and based on what you're describing, my first guess is that your copy of Internet Explorer um, has an add-on that's maybe being a little bit too helpful. I don't <laughs> think this is an Internet Explorer problem. I don't think it's a Gmail problem. I actually think it's a something else problem. Um, okay. You may have a... My guess is that uh, Richard has Norton antivirus or something along those lines installed. Interesting. And what many of those antivirus programs do is they install little add-ons into your browser to keep the browser safe. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, they may be designed for Internet Explorer 9. You just upgraded Internet Explorer 10, and this caused hmm. them to go haywire for whatever reason. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So to be on the safe side, I think the first thing you want to do is start, and, and I'm not going to assume it's any specific program. Who knows uh, what add-ins you have installed. But so to be on the safe side, let's start by disabling all the add-ons to Internet Explorer. Um, hmm. Now, you can do this by clicking on the settings menu in Internet Explorer and then going to manage add-ons and disabling them one by one. But if you have a lot of them, uh, it's actually quicker. There's a quicker way to click on the tools menu and then under toolbars, you'll see an option that says disable add-ons. And if you click on that, it'll bring up a dialog box that will allow you to do that. Now, once you've disabled your add-ons, you need to reboot your computer. And when it right. comes back up, open up Internet Explorer and then check if you're able to add attachments on Gmail. If that uh, conks out again, and it didn't work. Um, but if, if it doesn't, then congratulations, you've solved the problem. Now, probably it wasn't all those add-ons I was doing yeah. to you. It was just one of them. So we got to figure out which one is the right. one causing the problem. So you can start adding them back one by one. Add one, check the email. Add one, check the email. And until you find out which one is the problem, add in. And then you can just disable that one permanently. Um, now, again, if, it's, if you have something like Norton Antivirus, it's a good bet that those add-ons are causing the problem because other people on the Internet have had similar issues. Um, but you don't know for sure. Add-ins, sure. um, add-ons on the Internet Explorer just can have random side effects. You know, they're yeah. not developed by Microsoft, and so they can break. And yeah. uh, even just upgrading your browser can break them. And you know, if that doesn't resolve the problem, there's always an option. Just try a different browser. Mm -hmm. Chrome, yeah. anyone? Chrome. Yeah, it's looking very <laughs> nice this time of year. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> but you know, it, also too, you know, you don't have to turn them all back on. No, you know, true. you're saying you, after you turn them all off, if it works, mm -hmm. you can just leave them off because your browser is probably going to run faster yeah. without all those add-ons. In fact, my Internet Explorer bugs me whenever I open it up about once a month, but um, <laughs> all the time, Yeah. Uh, relatively speaking, about like, it'll tell you like, you know, disabling add-ons may speed up your browser. Like Internet Explorer itself tells you that. So yep. that tells you something. And a lot of times add-ons get added without even you being aware oh, of right. it. Oh, right. Yeah. Just, like, you know, they you, don't ask your permission or anything. You install a program and it slides in some toolbar or mm -hmm. some stuff. So 
disabling those browse or add-ons on your browser as a general rule is a good idea just to check it every mm-hmm. now and then and I, disable stuff just off the top of my head uh in fact i was looking at internet explorer on my computer trying to fix this problem and uh you know, I noticed, for instance, I had an Adobe Acrobat Link Helper. I don't, yeah. I didn't install. I didn't know I had that. You know, so yep. um, will Adobe still work without it? I'm guessing yes. So I disabled it. Cool. Well, hopefully that helps you out, Richard. Um, if it doesn't, or if you, uh, you or someone else has another question that they want to ask us, we have a phone number that you can call where they answer your questions. What? It's one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Excellent. Well, we got another question here. It's from Bill. Uh, I'll read that one. Okay. He writes, uh, question, I just read your response to Christine's question about browsers in April, and I have a follow-up question. Is there any way to completely block pop-up ads while running Chrome or Internet Explorer? Or is Firefox add-in the only solution? On both Chrome and IE, I have adjusted the settings to block pop-ups, but that doesn't stop them on many sites I visit. I realize that those annoying ads are paying for these otherwise free websites, but I have to wonder what's the point of blocking pop-ups when so many get through anyway. Slowing down the page loading to the point that it reminds me of being on Mm dial-up. Oh, the good old AOL days. Thanks. Uh, Excellent question, Bill. Um, Yeah, and I totally feel you. You go to some website and it pops up like 15 million windows and you're closing things sure. left and right. It's so frustrating. Um, and and uh, it's a good point that you raised you, that uh, Internet Explorer and Chrome both have options in their settings to block pop-ups. So why doesn't it work? What's up with that? Well, the thing you have to understand is that pop-up blocking is kind of an arms race. <laughs> yeah. Um, just like you can't tell your computer to block all viruses, that'd be nice, right? But the, the hackers don't sit still. They always come up with new ways to get around all the security settings. And so this is kind of the same thing with the the ad people that develop pop-up technology, I guess you could call it. Sure. Um, every time there's a new advance in pop-up blockers, um, the people making the pop-up ads just get smarter. And I've actually dealt with that at work, uh, trying to develop internal sites. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of our plop- pop-up block- blocking stuff mm-hmm. prevents me from doing things that I actually need the, something to pop up right now. I have also struggled <laughs> with that at So work. what do we do? We program around it right. and make it work anyways. Exactly, because there's legitimate uh uses for pop-ups yeah. right you know like there's many legitimate uses that a website might really actually need to have a pop-up not for ads right so the browser can't just block pop-ups completely because that would make many websites non-functional right um so if you're really serious about blocking pop-ups in internet explorer or chrome what you need to do is in addition to setting that setting in the settings wow did i really setting setting that settings in the settings yes <laughs> in the settings uh, in addition to checking that box to block pop-ups, you probably need to download an add-in or extension, uh, much like you did for Firefox. And uh, on Chrome, check out AdBlock, AdBlock Plus. Or, One word, AdBlock. Yeah, or Better Pop-Up Blocker. Those are two good ones for Chrome. Your options are a little more limited on Internet Explorer, but there is an add-on called Smart Pop-Up Blocker that will block most pop-ups. It's not 100%, but it's about the best we could find. And just a friendly little uh, public service announcement about pop-up blocking. Many free websites are Mm ad-supported. So when you visit your favorite site and you've got a pop-up blocker running, you may have avoided seeing that annoying pop-up ad, but you also cost that site some ad revenue. Mm -hmm. So be sure to deploy your pop-up blocker judiciously. Uh, You know, most pop-up blockers give you the ability to add or or allow pop-ups for certain sites. And be sure to allow them for sites that you want to support. So if you have a site that you love and you want them to keep doing what they're doing and they have pop-up ads, maybe contact them and say, hey, you don't like pop-up ads, Mm -hmm. but you might not want to block those pop-up ads because that's how they make money. Yeah, exactly. Something to keep in mind. Well, let's see. Do we have any other questions? I think we've burned through all our questions none for that, None that we've answered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for your questions and keep them coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and thanks again to DJ for coming on the show. Uh, give us a call at our toll-free number. It's 1-888-972-9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. And make sure to subscribe to the show. Mm. Search for Deemable Tech on iTunes and YouTube. And or just point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder for video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Devable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. <laughs> <laughs>